Gordon the big engine was proud to pull the express. He felt that he was the only engine strong enough to do so. Which I'm sorry to say had made him rather conceited and puffed up in the smoke box. One morning, Gordon was being more pompous than ever. Donald and Douglas were visiting from the Little Western and were receiving the brunt of Gordon's self-adoration. I say, my dear engines, I am the pride of the line, Gordon boasted. The fat controller has made me his premier express engine. He has painted me bright blue and red so that when I fly down the line, everyone knows it is me. The twins rolled their eyes but decided to play along. Aye, Gordon, you'd be a sight for sore eyes, Donald said. You're as new at that engine that can pull the express better than you, Douglas added. Gordon smiled as his ego got larger and larger. The twins were about to leave when they realized that Gordon wasn't quite through. You see, the fat controller has painted me this way to set me apart from the rest. You two are painted black and are filthy. You're only good engines. You could never pull the express like me. Donald and Douglas were hurt. While it was true that the twins were best at managing trucks, they were considered versatile, but Gordon didn't recognize this. Watch for me on the main line, Gordon called as he puffed out of the shed. Goodbye! Who does he think he is saying such things to us? Douglas seethed. Goods engines, are we? Donald added. Donald and Douglas wanted to pay Gordon out but they weren't sure how. Later that afternoon, the twins were shunting when the fat controller walked up. Donald and Douglas, he said, you've been working hard here in the yard while your branch line is being repaired. I'd like to reward you with a fresh coach of paint before you return to the Little Western. Would you like that? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, said the twins. Good. Once you're finished, you're all to go to the work to be painted. Donald and Douglas beamed and finished their work at once. When the twins arrived, the crew set to work. What the twins didn't realize was that the foreman had accidentally switched work orders during the morning rush and had supplied the painters with blue and red paint instead of black. The crew members were new and didn't realize this. The twins were astonished when they saw themselves. Oh hi Donald, will you be bluer than the sky above? Bluer than the sea? Douglas laughed. And as blue as... The twins smiled. Gordon. Donald and Douglas decided not to tell anyone about the mix-up, and together they puffed quietly back to the sheds. The next morning, Gordon waited impatiently for his express coaches. Come on, come on, come on, he muttered under his breath. He waited and waited, but his coaches didn't come. He hissed steam with annoyance. The fat controller came out of his office to see what all the noise was. He was shocked to see Gordon sitting in the station platform. Gordon, what are you doing back so soon? Gordon was confused. Back, sir? I haven't even left yet. But I'll show you leave at the express not 20 minutes ago. Now they were both puzzled. If that wasn't you who took the express, then who was it? It was Donald and Douglas, sir, called a porter. Gordon's face turned red. What? What? Gordon spluttered. Donald and Douglas, the fat controller began. But they're painted black. I saw a blue engine outside my window this morning. They were blue, sir. The guard was in a hurry and only saw that the engines at the head of the train were blue and red. The fat controller paused, and they began to chuckle as he realized what had happened. What's so funny, sir? Gordon asked. I think, Gordon, that the twins are giving you a taste of your own medicine. 
and indeed they had. As the twins pulled the big express down the line, making all of Gordon's stops, passerby could have sworn it was Gordon flying through by the flashes of blue. Gordon, without an express to pull, shunted dirty coal trucks for the rest of the day. He grumbled dreadfully. Trucks! He returned late that night to the sheds. Pay him no mind. He's only a goods engine, called a familiar voice from inside the sheds. Gordon decided it was best that he keep his mouth shut. 